Hey YouTubers, I wanted to do a little update on these LT1 cylinder heads, but I wanted to point out to anybody watching these videos that the porting theory techniques and applications can be applied to any cylinder head, you know, so don't limit yourself in your information gathering to only one particular head when you're doing your research. Try to find out the uh, reasons why the different processes and procedures are done and then I'm apply them to whatever cylinder head you're working on, whether it be automotive, motorcycle, marine, whatever, whatever. I am more than likely going to at least at a lesser degree leave these undercuts in the back side of this bowl. At some point during the machining process, GM at, or one of their subsidiaries that created these cylinder heads, they undercut that portion of the bowl with their machining process or tooling. So basically what I'm trying to impress upon you is you've got your roll from your valve seat into your bowl area. You don't need to dig I actually prefer not to dig any deeper in this area behind this guide because you don't gain anything by increasing the angle the air has to turn to get into the cylinder. I hope hopefully you guys can follow the logic and the theory behind that is that when you have air coming in this port you want it to be able to climb this back wall as quickly, efficiently, with loss, you know, with as much velocity as possible to get into your cylinder head. And then, of course, we've talked previously, but I'll mention when you have a biased port where you have one side that's larger than the other, you're automatically going to have more flow on this side of the port, which is going to promote a swirling or turning effect because basically this side is going to be moving more air faster and it's going to almost pull i hate to use the word but let's just call it a vacuum you know kind of like an x pipe on your exhaust on your car this is going to come across and help this air get into the cylinder but let's not get too far off track basically what i wanted to show you and i've got two two uh videos that i've created that I'm gonna try to put together so you can kind of see as I work through this process. So basically you have your bowl cut to the percentage of your valve size that you've selected. Then you want to absolutely blend that percentage into your casting or the port or bowl blend as seamlessly as you can and try to straighten these side walls out. I mean, don't go digging too deep because I don't want you to poke any holes and get any wells and water shooting through but my point I'm trying to make is I'm going to smooth this out slightly but my main concern is absolutely not to remove this factory undercut because it's not hurting anyone okay that is nothing more than a cosmetic blemish that GM put in there during their machining process of the cylinder head. So don't get preoccupied with, oh, I've got to keep digging back here so I can make that go away. That is hurting no one. You know, when this cylinder head is assembled with the valves in it, no one's going to see this and it's going to have zero effect on the performance of the engine, the cylinder head flow, you know, etc., etc. So, I just wanted to point that out. We're not concerned about this cosmetic blemish. We're going to try to maintain the least amount of turn possible as we blend in our bowl cut. Now, if you look back here at the base of this valve guide boss, you can see this dark area. That's raw casting material that I have not touched yet. Okay. This is the preliminary valve guide boss reshaping. It's not the final product, okay? So what we're gonna talk about is we've got our port alignment 
here, we talked before about going from the apex of your intake port through your valve guide to the back wall so that you've got your point of reference. So what we're gonna do is we'll continue to work this down all the way to the roof of that port to you know even more reduce profile of this big bump that's going to direct the air around our valve guide or valve stem you know because basically what you're doing is you're taking that air that's going to come in and it's going to have to split the way that air come around that obstruction with the least amount of uh, turbulence so basically I will be making this slightly smaller but it'll blend seamlessly into the new port roof and everything will get smoothed out. So I wanted you guys to kind of follow along with what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So let me switch over to this other head that has more work done to it so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay guys, this gives me a, a pretty decent angle to kind of show more work more process as I went from my initial rough cut to my medium cut my shaping eventually going to the finer cuts you know eventually getting to the sanding rolls etc etc this is why the porting process should be multi-stage not just going in willy-nilly with the most aggressive burr you can find trying to remove a bunch of material because that's not how you end up with the properly textured, shaped, smooth surface, you'll end up putting gouges, dips, uh, troughs, whatever you want to call it, in your uh, material if you get too aggressive with too, uh, too much effort, let's say. So basically you want to go slow. Okay, you can see on this port, I have, you know, you can still see that factory undercut that was that was put there by GM but you can also see where I have worked this valve guide boss even more pulling it back slowly until it starts to blend into my new roof because remember we had to um, work that roof all the way in you know maybe you guys can't see it from this angle but in the previous uh, video that I am going to use that port that half of the port was still factory cast so maybe you can see the difference in the reflection of the light but i just want you guys to focus on how i've slowly reduced this valve guide boss profile down to the roof you know we're not doing anything uh aggressively to where we put gouges and dips and uneven surface texture into the port that we can't get out without running a chance of hurting something that would be detrimental so basically what you're looking at is your bowl cut and then blending it all the way down these older model small block chevy heads they tend to have like a ridge right in the middle of the short turn it's just a byproduct of the way they cast the cylinder heads and that ridge that you'll be able to feel with your finger if you rub you know put let your finger do the looking you can run your finger around that little short turn and right in the middle of the stupid short turn you'll feel like this raised ridge area okay we have to slowly work that short turn to remove that ridge and make a, a nice even uh, some porting theories call it a waterfall effect. So basically, it's just a nice smooth radius without that raised ridge. And then you can also see where I've been working my blend from my new bowl cut percentage right here. The base, we're going to call that the base of our valve seat, needs to go smoothly. No lips, no catching, nothing. Straight down into this wall, straight up to the where it comes in. You know what I mean? I want to direct that incoming air to have zero restrictions, least amount of turbulence, and what do they call that? Frictional flow losses. <sighs> Some of these terms are pretty interesting. 
but you just wanted that air to come in as unrestricted as possible get in the stupid cylinder okay so basically i'm just wanting you guys to see as the heads are working the processes of setting your bowl cut percentage uh, reducing your valve guide boss profile blending you know when people use the terms oh it's got a bowl you know i got I did a bowl cut or i did a bowl cut bowl blend that's what they're talking about hopefully they're using you know actual bowl cut percentages because that's how you know what you're going to get when you get done i mean some people just go in here and just start cutting on the head and sanding on it and just smooth it out and go with it but the right way to do it is to set your bowl cut percentage do your blend and like I've always said, and I will continue to say in all my porting videos, your work should go from one end of the port all the way to the other. You know what I mean? When you do work on one end, blend it all the way through the port. Don't just, you know, work on the entry for an inch or so and leave it. You know, make that thing flow. Get that, uh, oh, I used to refer to it as that line of sight flow, but people don't like that term so basically just using your common sense maintaining the least amount of angle you can on this back wall don't dig down behind the guide because you don't gain anything by trying to make the air turn at a sharper angle just keep that in mind you don't want to add angle for that air to turn behind the guide it's not beneficial Smooth everything from the valve guide boss, you know, reshaping a reduction of profile. Smooth it all the way into the roof. Don't be afraid, you know, just smooth it all out. You know, and here's, here's another thing I see people do that I think is funny. They will take and bullet nose this whole end of the guide. What? You're not really gaining anything by doing that because the air's coming off a surface this big to fly around a valve stem that's this big. That air ain't gonna know what's going on on that little, I don't know, dumb in my opinion. But if you feel like you wanna do it to make it look prettier or whatever, that's your choice. But I just clean it up, knock the edge off and, and run it. So that is my process of trying to clean up these bowls. The intakes are really close to being, the intake ports are really close to being done. Um, I have a lot more work to do on the exhaust ports, but I wanted to give you an update on where I was at because, you know, I'm not really good at the keeping all these videos and getting them all, you know, pasted or put together. But I wanted you guys to kind of follow along with the process, how I do these heads, why I do them the way I do them. And that way, when you get on your cylinder heads, you'll know what to expect as you work through it in your stage or stepped process. You know, you'll get to where you want to be and you won't hurt anything. So I appreciate you guys watching. I'll try to get another video up as soon as possible, uh, kind of showing the process of working the exhaust. Because I've done a lot of major uh, valve guide or boss reshaping or reduction on that exhaust side, because that's one of the big uh, flow improvers on that side of the cylinder head. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully, these are informative. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please hit up the comments. You know, I'm open to answering any questions, I'm open to criticism. You know, if you found different ways that work better for you and you know, let me know. It might be something I can improve because I'm always wanting to make more horsepower and flow more air. So if there's a proven way to do that, I'll jump on board and ride in that car. So, thanks again for watching. Hope you guys have a good weekend.